Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, quarter after one, it's the eighth, 61 degrees, still Monday. Beautiful day in the Hudson Valley. And where am I, uh, there you go. Batteries all charged up, gotta love solar energy. All right, what are we up to today? I'm gonna call this uh, Judgment Day for the uh, for the mule. I gotta figure out what to do with this thing and make it happen, or I gotta get it up for sale and get rid of it. There's no better time to sell a project like this than in the spring. In the fall, winter, it's easy to buy projects like this. It's hard to uh, hard to sell them. Um, my problem with shooting this video is I'm having a, a, a tough time seeing the screen on the camera. I'm just kind of aiming it in a general direction. So if I end up talking and pointing and you can't see my hand or what I'm pointing at, realize the sun's in my eyes, which for the Hudson Valley is not a common thing. You've, for those of you who watch my videos, you realize that we get this year particularly, we, it's been cloudy and kind of crappy here. Anyway, here we are. We have the mule, those of you who remember, it ran into a fire hydrant and uh, somebody pulled the front wheel off, tore the front wheel right off. So what I've done is I've put this um, shock strut, actually I guess it's a strut, right, because the shock's built in. I put it back in to place, it's loose, so it will fall out. And now I'm looking over the front end and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And while I was floating around, uh, to pick up that rear end over there, and we'll talk about the back in a minute. I found that I also have some golf cart components here. You can see that's where the front wheel goes. And then you can see the rest of it. I'm just looking at it, trying to, trying to figure out, you know, how it could be mounted and put together here. It's obviously longer than the ones in there and um, because of the way the front end is built on this as this goes up and down it maintains what is that caster camber can you see my hand yeah okay you know it maintains this uh, obviously a golf cart does not do that um, I have a pair of these one for each side and I'm just looking to see how I would do this I could theoretically Put in a lower frame and go further that way but that would probably well yeah i can i can set this up more inboard go with a a, a different piece of frame so the tire would more or less be in the same place it would jack the unit up which isn't necessarily a bad thing then i could even use the same shock tower just just mount it somewhere over here once again the um, the uh, caster camber if you're looking at the tire the in and out as I'm going over bumps won't be great but uh, you know I don't picture driving this at the speed of sound or worse yet at the speed of light um, the I guess that's called rack and pinion this guy appears to be okay oh god as uh oh as um wild-eyed northern boy lord have mercy man anyhow so i don't have i guess this is i'm gonna call this the knuckle i don't have one of these so i have to kind of start fresh um but back to this guy if i mount it a little further in i should I might have a little a little trouble with the um, with the rack and pinion but we'll see what we can do with that so anyway loosely thinking that's the front end no matter what I'm gonna do with this rig if it's going to be four wheels I gotta fix the front end and it looks like I have basically what I need to do that oh god oh. Yeah, I've been doing things I shouldn't be doing, so I'm feeling much more pain than I should be. Okay, on this guy, um, what it has is each back wheel, 
maybe I can show it better from this angle. Actually, let me come around so I can see the screen so you can see what I'm pointing at. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. You can see the shock. And there's a little arm here. It's short. That's where it hooks to the frame, right here. So it's relatively short. And um, it's got independent rear suspension. So the independent rear suspension comes out of the rear end. This is some kind of brake. That guy, I think you can see my hand around the muffler. That's some kind of brake, it appears. This is forward and reverse. It's got a little switch here to keep you from killing yourself. Um, that's an oil line. As I'm looking at this thing, I'm realizing that the engine is integrated right to it. Here's an oil filter down here. I don't know, could you guys see my hand? I'm trying to see the screen and I can't see anything. Uh, yeah, that's an oil pressure switch down below it. There, I'm tapping it with my finger. That's uh, an oil filter. So it looks like the only way of getting this engine off is kind of splitting the case right here. So the whole rear end has to come out of this thing. It looks like it all comes out of the bottom because I got the support on top, that bracket, the seat. I mean, it might come out the top, but it actually it does have to come out the top. Boy, this is going to be heavy. Anyway, so the engine has to come out the top. Um, you guys saw me trying to turn this over yesterday. Um, I didn't realize that the carburetors were hooked together. If you turn this, you're turning on both carburetors at the same time. And uh, this uses basically, this is a Keevan carburetor. This uses the same carb as my, um, my um, 250SX. It looks very, very similar. Anyway, um, looking at, at this, when I was turning it over yesterday, I put, or a couple of days ago, um, Saturday, I put my hand over this and I was getting quite a bit of draw but I put my hand over this one. I was getting very, very little draw. I'm going to try turning it over one more time to see uh, what the potential is. I spent a few minutes looking at the wiring. I didn't have it in forward or reverse. Um, so I'm not quite sure what its problem was. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go into, uh, it wouldn't start it didn't seem to have a spark. I was hitting it with starting fluid and I didn't seem to get a spark out of it. I don't know if it's got a seat belt switch or whatever. The wires are a little hacked up. Not horrible though. I've seen bikes a lot worse than this. I mean most of this wiring is intact. Not much of it's unplugged. I don't know if perhaps I mean there are a couple of things. Well that's just the reverse horn. I think that's the reverse thing. So, anyhow, well, that's a horn. I did have the key switch on. I had this in neutral, though it looks like that switch is on the transmission. So I'm not quite sh I don't think it was sparking. Um, this appears to have the ignition, um, what provides power to the ignition, uh, inside the motor. It doesn't it doesn't look like it needs a battery to spark. Probably what I should do though is I should fool around with the wires a little more before I call this engine dead. Um, because if all I have to do is hack that front end under it and I get this engine started and it's a good engine, I'm really not in too bad a shape here. I got a lot less work to do if that's the case. Because um, to pull this whole drive chain out will be uh, will be painful uh, that'll be a lot of work um, I mean to put this in doesn't look like it'll be that bad the uh, width 
is almost exactly the same. If you look across here, you get about 36 inches, and uh, that's about the same case um, with this guy, right? You know, give or take an inch or two. Not not that big a deal, so the tires stick out. Um, these shock mounts, um, say about 23, 24 inches. Once again, same with those shocks. Um, this this guy has much shorter arms on it, so to speak. This whole pan used to move when it was in a golf cart. The motor sat there, then this whole whole pan went up and down when it was in the golf cart. Um, anyway, just kind of taping some of this because I'm still I'm still thinking about what I'm up to. Um, My lean, I, I keep getting back to it. I'd really, really like to get this engine and radiator and all this paraphernalia the heck out from underneath here. Put a nice, simple Honda electric start situation with a chain drive to this guy. This guy has forward and reverse. That's what this mess right here. That's what that is. Um, then I have a chain drive to forward and reverse. I have a five speed. I have a, uh, a nice a nice unit. Once I get this rear end out, I can see how I can mount to the back um, the, the, the back plate. I might well the rear end will tie it together. I just have to figure out how I'm going to hook it up back there. Um, so that's my lean. Then also I can grab those carburetors, the Kevin Kevin carburetor, same as my um, my um, 250SX uses, so that gives me some spare carburetors. I got a starter there. Um, once again, it simplifies this mess entirely. It cleans up this whole carnival and makes it so that turn on the key, either pull the string or electric start a 200E motor, maybe put a really crazy shifter in between the seats, in between passenger and driver. Um, you know, kind of have that weird golf cart front end on it. Anyway, so I guess you guys could kind of see that it's I'm trying. I'm it's coming together slowly. Anyway, I don't know how long this video is. The sun's blocking me, so I can't really see the screen very well. Um, live, love, and have a great time. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Horde. This is a long video, 13 minutes. It's going to take forever to upload. So um, remember, tires down, handlebars up, and try not to run your mule into a fire hydrant. It's not good for it. All right, folks, take care.